I'd like to begin this a little bit differently. I think a lot of you here were here yesterday when the storm was going on, when the lights were flashing, when the lights were going off, when the wind was blowing at 60 miles an hour. Well, our crews went out there, they took care of trees, they took care of branches, they took care of us. Would all of the physical plant please stand and be saluted? Everybody from the physical plant up. Thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for this campus. Thank you for caring. And with that, I want to talk about somebody who does care. Patrick Dorsey, the ASI president. He's been in this role now for about a year, almost, it seems like. And every time he's pushed a little bit harder and a little bit harder about food insecurity, about homelessness, about our students, and about having the best, safest environment we can have for them. He's been an outstanding leader, and all of the ASI board has been outstanding this year, and we've moved forward, and we're better people because of Patrick Dorsey. We started this tradition last year. We wanted to give the students a voice a voice every spring so that everyone could come and hear them and hear what they are thinking, what they need, and how we can help them. Patrick, thank you for everything. Please come up. Wow, good morning, Hornet family. Usually, I get to introduce him, so this time I'm completely taken aback. Thank you for that, for that lovely introduction. I may be the 65th ASI president, but I am only the second to address the campus community, and I really have all of that owed to President Nelson and to his vision of a student-centered campus. So thank you so much for your commitment to that and for allowing me this opportunity to be here today. This opportunity, it means so much to me. My experience, like many of my fellow Hornets, it's, if you were to ask me four years ago if I could imagine completing my bachelor's degree, starting my master's, and leading ASI, I would have told you it was an impossibility. Uh, four years ago, I was struggling at my community college. I had bad grades, I had a 1.7 GPA, and I was struggling with myself because I could not come to terms with who I really am, and that's a gay man. I did not believe that I had a future or a last a chance in the community that vilified my existence. But it was because of faculty and staff at my Crafton Hills Community College, my junior college, and now here at Sacramento State, that I continue to redefine my future. Thank you all for the important roles that you play in transforming my life and for transforming the lives of the students here in our campus. Please, let's give you a round of applause. It has been a privilege working with you all to serve our 30,000 students. We have accomplished so much this past semester. As the capital CSU, we continue to cultivate an enriching learning experience for our diverse and promising student population. But in the CSU, we are also leaders. Many of our initiatives are at the forefront of student success, and we are leading the way of what it really means to be truly student-centered. For example, the University Task Force on Food and Housing Security, consisting of representatives from across the campus, is working to ensure that our students' basic needs are met. Our goal is for students to finish in four, not be the one in four who are hungry or the one in 10 that are homeless. How can we expect a student to be engaged if they're worried about their next meal or if they will have shelter that night? We understood this and through a wonderful partnership with the task force, student affairs, residence life, 
I am pleased to announce that Sacramento State will now be providing on-campus emergency housing for these students in crisis. They will have a place to stay, to eat, to get back to working toward their degree and working toward their dreams of achieving an education. In the wake of the recent elections, our undocumented students were confronted with uncertainty in regard to the immigration status of their self and their families and what that would mean if they would still be able to pursue their education. Caring and committed members of our campus community and the Sacramento community came together in real and tangible ways. Incredibly, in a matter of a week's time, the Dream Resource Center, Vince Salas and his team, and the University Foundation and many wonderful people came together and donated a scholarship fund so that these individuals feel a confidence that we will stand beside them as they continue to achieve their dreams and their college education. These accomplishments would not have been possible without the commitment that you have made and our commitment to work together, moving beyond the limitations of working in isolation. There is still so much that we need to focus on in 2017 and the semester that lies ahead. We have many challenges that confront us. These challenges include student success, the political climate, and our potential tuition increases. First, student success. While we celebrate our accomplishments, we must elevate our unified commitment to student success, specifically timely progress degree. This includes raising expectations for ourselves and excelling in the dynamic integration of what it means to learn in the classroom and the services that we deliver to our students. Starting with student orientation onward, we must ensure that students are connected to the campus and that they feel they are a member of the Hornet family. To do this, we must listen to students and we must value them as active participants in the educational process. Through an understanding of their backgrounds, we can recognize diverse talents, unique abilities, and incorporate their innate skills into their learning experience. As a campus, we need to encourage each other to attend Dreamer Ally training, Safe Zone training, so we can develop an awareness, an understanding, and appreciation of both our differences and our similarities creating a more welcoming and inclusive campus environment. Finally, with the active collaboration of academic and student affairs, we can identify students who are at risk of attrition. Together, we can identify these students who are in distress, who are falling behind, who are not coming to class as frequently, and we can streamline them to the appropriate campus resources so that they can get the attention that they need and they deserve, and they can get back to unlocking their true potential. It is imperative that the university maintain its efforts to prioritize a curriculum that is challenging and meaningful to students. We are thankful for the tools that empower us to be active participants in monitoring our progress to degree. Class availability will continue to be of critical importance, and ASI will continue opportunities for student engagement in setting priorities and curriculum policies, working in unison with faculty and administration. We understand our students' learning happens both inside and outside the classroom. Second, political climate. Tomorrow, many of us will be challenged by the uncertainty of a new presidential administration. The nation's issues continue to grow. Income inequality, tensions from this past year's shootings, racial injustices, climate change, and campaign rhetoric clearly affect us all. But we must keep our focus on the students' experience at Sacramento State and how we can shape their future and how they can shape the future of our nation. We must maintain student access to affordable, quality, and equitable education, an environment that honors and respects all. It is essential that all students fill the campus is a safe place for them to pursue their education and explore the many opportunities available as they find themselves on their path. The adoption of the Hornet Honor Code is timely and should be a common point for us all to unite around this cause. Our educational experience must foster critical thinking and help us develop a sense of civic engagement despite what major or discipline we pursue. 
but it is the belief in ourselves and our ability to apply the knowledge that we learn and make the changes that we wish to see, that is what gives us hope. We can, we will, see the world that we envision. Third, the potential tuition increases. Sadly, an affordable education for our students is once again challenged by the threat of potential tuition increases. Recently, the governor released his state budget for the coming year. I acknowledge that state revenues are lower than expected, and I understand that the budget is large and complex, and that there are many items that need funding. The competition is tremendous, but ASI, in partnership with the California State Student Association, is committed to making our voices heard at the state capitol. Myself, Mia K. Giannis, and President Nelson, we partnered to create a student forum to apprise our students of this potential of a tuition increase. And as would be expected, our students are very upset and deeply concerned. I recognize that California continues to have the lowest cost of education in the nation, but the impact of the CSU has on California's economy is too significant to follow the trend of the nation. Our graduates are the workforce. We are the leaders, the innovators, the entrepreneurs. We are the organizers, not just for the Sacramento region, but for the state. And we are committed to speaking out about our increasing debt that our students are faced with and how they often struggle to pay off their loans. We must emphasize to our legislators that the investment in education is an investment in the success of California. We will participate in visits to legislative offices, speak at higher education hearings, and join CSU students at the annual California Higher Education Student Summit early in March. Our hope is that Sacramento State brings the power of a unified students, staff, faculty, and administration to convince the legislature and Governor Brown that investment in an educated California is an investment in a beautiful Californian future. Thank you. Now, uh, I, I get to do a closing. Uh, it is my pleasure, I, I've worked with the Office of uh, Public Affairs for this, to share the premiere of a new two-minute video called Experience Sac State, fostering a sense of Hornet pride, is a powerful way to bring attention to the incredible things happening at Sac State and the ways that we are making a difference for our students and our community. Produced by the Office of Public Affairs, this video offers a high energy glimpse into life on our campus and is intended to reach prospective students, current students, community leaders, and more. Going forward, Experience Sac State will be showcased on the university's homepage and many of our communications channels. A shorter companion piece will be utilized as a television commercial. Following, my, uh, following the video, it is my honor to announce that President Robert S. Nelson will be giving his spring address with you. But first, let's feel a little bit of Hornet pride and experience Sac State. Here we are, our eyes wide open. We see the road ahead. We're part of something bigger. The energy's addicting. So many with a vision. We are the dreamers, the heroes, the ones who change our communities, build our cities, make the policy, change the course, sing the verse, are passionate about compassion, inclusive to all. There are more like you here than unlike you. We cheer each other on. We connect with each other, celebrate our victories. We comfort those in trials. To the Hornet family, challenges are just another door ready to be open. When we make it happen, victory is shared with all. So take hold and see yourself in the present, in the now. See that vision unfold among others. Redefine the possible. Redefine you.
here we are, our eyes wide open. We see the road ahead. We are part of something bigger. So many with visions. We are the dreamers, the heroes, the ones who change our communities. Passionate about compassion, victory is shared for all. These messages, this university, our faculty, our staff, our students, resonate with me. They touch my heart, and I hope that they touch yours as well. We really are part of something bigger. I think that Patrick's words, his message, proves that we are part of something bigger, part of something bigger than the recent election. Yes, we are starting a new year. Yes, there will be a new administration in Washington. Yes, there will be changes that some will like and some will not. But we are still us. We must remain us. We must stick to our core values, to whom we are and what we are. We are hornets. We are a hornet family. We must maintain and live in accordance with our hornet honor code. Quote, as proud members and representatives of Sacramento State Hornet community, we commit ourselves to actively promoting honesty, integrity, respect, and care for every person, ensuring a welcoming campus environment, and striving to help every member of our Hornet family feel a strong sense of community and belonging. As Hornets, we will one, promote an inclusive campus and community. Two, listen and respect each other's thoughts, interests, and views. Three, value diversity and learn from one another. Four, engage daily with mutual trust, care, and integrity. Five, support a culture of honor and adhere to campus policies for honesty, ethics, and con conduct. Six, be proud to be Sac State Hornets. I don't see this election changing us from who we are, from creating new knowledge, from expanding minds, from teaching, from quite literally and quite importantly, maintaining our democracy. We at Sac State truly are a part of something bigger, yet our mission is so simple and so perfect for today. You know it, all of us know it, as well as I do. As California's Capital University, we transform lives by preparing students for leadership, service, and success. And we do it when we can, in four years for our undergraduates and in two years for our transfer students. But we do it for all of our students, regardless of how long it takes them to graduate. And we do it for all of our students, for our DACA students, for our undocumented students, for our young Republicans, for our young Democrats, for our straight and gay students, for the entire LGBTQ community. We do it for the McNair scholars, for our Guardian scholars, for our Cooper Woodson scholars. We do it for the students who use the Dreamers Resource Center, for the students who have found a home at the Martin Luther King Jr. Center, or for the members of the Full Circle Project, for those who use the Pride Center, the Multicultural Center, the Women's Resource Center. We do it for our student athletes, and we do it for the students who play club, club sports. We do it for everyone who eats at round table pizza. 
everyone who walks through the student union. Everyone who attends and is part of this university. Leadership, service, success, honesty, integrity, respect, and care for every person. <laughs> Proud Hornets. You know, I feel like I should stop here because that sums us up. And actually, I must admit that I struggled about what to say today. I don't want to make this speech into a political speech. In this time of uncertainty, I want to speak about us, about what we are doing, what we are going to do, and sadly about the financial future of the university and what that may be. I do know that we must stay true to the four imperatives that I introduced in the fall address. One, the imperative, the reduced to time to degree imperative. Two, the diversity, inclusion, and equity imperative. Three, the philanthropic giving imperative. And four, the community involvement and collaboration imperative. We've made true progress with these imperatives in this short time, in this fall. As part of the Finish in Four and through in two campaigns, the keys to degree toolkit and smart planner are up and running. Would all those who are putting in place smart planner, please stand up so I can thank you for your hard work. Fifteen workshops have been offered. Hundreds of faculty, advisors, and students have attended the training. Over 6,000 students have completed their degree plans in Smart, in smart Planner. And academic affairs and student affairs, working with information resources and technology, will finish building the remaining programs this spring. We added more than 370 courses this fall adding over 12,000 seats for students. And this spring, <laughs> this spring we are adding 169 more sections than last year for a grand total of 5,205 sections. <laughs> the provost, Mike Lee, and thank you, Mike, for everything that you've done for our faculty and our students. <laughs> the provost, Mike Lee, actually emailed all of the students and asked them to email him if they were unable to get a class. Provosts don't send those type of emails at normal universities. <laughs> we do, Mike Lee does, because we're not normal. <laughs> we're exceptional. <laughs> Over 65% of the freshmen took at least 15 credits last semester which is remarkable when you compare those numbers to barely 11% a few years ago. That 65% explains why 28,000 people have downloaded our parking app. <laughs> the 65% explains why our students have checked out computers, iPads, tablets, and laptops, get this number, 671,461 times this year. It also explains why 
there's plastic outside here, and we're expanding the student union by 71,000 square feet. And it explains why we're building a new science building. As I told you in the fall address, we have 75, 71 million to build the new science building. We still have to raise 20 million to finish it. As of now, we have 420,000 committed to that 20 million, and we have our first major gift from Ramona Anderson for the science building. Thanks to Jill Trainer, the dean, Tom Landerholm, and Kelly McDonald, science received 250,000 to continue purchasing equipment for this serious project. Get this acronym. Sustainable Interdisciplinary Research to Inspire Undergraduate Success. <laughs> Perfect for Sac State. Will the Dean, Tom, and Kelly please stand so that we can thank you for getting that grant. <laughs> the serious project not, is not only involving chemistry, geology, and biology, but it's also environmental sciences and the College of Social Sciences and Interdisciplinary Studies. Many people are coming together to make the science building a reality. Would the members of the comprehensive campaign please rise so that we can thank you for the 20 million that you're about to raise for us. <laughs> In just a little over a year, they have helped us to raise 20% of our ultimate goal. 5,631 donors made more than 14,000 gifts to Sac State. On Giving Tuesday alone, in just one day, we raised 136,349 dollars from 300 donors, and the foundation matched that with another $10,000. Of course, a lot of that money is going for scholarships, but I want to tie into the need that Patrick talked about earlier. As many of you know, we have established the President's Circle, a fund that is dedicated to stocking the food pantry, providing emergency grants for students in need, and helping students study abroad. This fall semester, we were able to give the food pantry $25,000 from the President's Circle, funds that many of our faculty and staff helped to supply. I would also mention that SunSuite Growers donated $5,000 in produce. Downtown Ford has donated a car for two years. Wells Fargo Bank also donated $5,000 for the food pantry's use. With the President's Circle, we also replenished the Student Emergency Fund with $25,000. And two donors endowed the Emergency Fund with another 25,000. Finally, we have allotted, for the first time ever, $10,000 from the President's Circle to offset the travel expenses for students who will study abroad this year. And yet another donor, and I'm stressing these donors because there's so many people who care about Sac State and our students, and yet another donor has pledged $20,000 to support study abroad for the next five years. Yes, we are making huge progress at Sac State on those four imperatives. The Office of Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion is a reality. 
Would Robin Carter and all the members of the Diversity Council please rise so that we can recommend it we can recognize you and thank you. The search for a permanent director will begin this spring, but in the meantime, the office and Dr. Carter have been very busy. Working with the Center for Diversity and Inclusion, Dr. Carter helped facilitate a series of weekly dialogues led by a campus leaders focused on themes like Black Lives Matter. The Center for Diversity and Inclusion also held a post-election forum to allow the students the opportunity to engage in constructive dialogue about the election. And the Office of Diversity, of Equity, Diversity and Inclusion, in partnership with the University Staff Assembly, hosted a separate post-election forum for staff, faculty, and others to assist them in preparing for the changes likely to occur with the new administration and provide practical resources to assist our students. More forums and dialogues are planned this spring. Dr. Carter is also working closely with the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Learning in developing resource material for faculty on civil discourse in and out of the classroom. The Office of Equity, Diversity and Inclusion also co-sponsored a workshop with Brian Dewsbury on inclusive pedagogies. Next semester, the Office will, of, will be providing diversity training for staff, faculty and administrators on implicit bias and its impact on reducing the impact of the public school teacher shortage as part of the community involvement and collaboration imperative, Sacramento State has been awarded $248,806 for a planning grant by the Commission on Teacher Credentialing. The grant will be used to create an accelerated path to a BA in Liberal Studies or Child Development plus two credentials for elementary teaching and for general science teaching. Students will be able to get their BA and their teaching credentials in four years. It's an ambitious plan led by Tim Fong, Amber Gonzalez, and Pia Wong. Will you please rise so we can say thank you for making this reality. And will the stellar faculty, and I mean stellar faculty, who are the champions and the faculty fellows who are going to make this happen throughout all of the colleges, please rise so we can thank you for stepping up. So many people have come together and decided to be involved. They will be creating a new, shorter teacher education option that will prepare our students, including transfer students from Sacramento City College, to be outstanding teachers, fully prepared to meet the needs of our region's diverse students. There are so many great things happening at Sac State as part of these imperatives. There's a transgender equity force that we are forming to work on transgender issues such as name changes, bathroom signage and uses and safety. Would Dana Kivel and Chris please stand so that we can thank you for heading this important initiative. There is also a task force on community engagement that has over 35 members. The purpose of the task force is to determine A, the operating principles to guide community engagement on our campus, B, systems or processes to coordinate these efforts amongst faculty, staff, and students, and C, appropriate community 
partners and or targets for strategic community engagement activities. Will the 435 people that are involved in this effort please thank, rise so that we can thank you. They're shy about rising up. Get up. You're giving your time, your efforts, your hearts. And today, I'm announcing the creation of Sacramento State Workforce Advisory Council to further Sac State's collaborations with industry, entrepreneurs, government, the arts, and the community. This Workforce Advisory Council will help stimulate the economy, create jobs for our students, foster innovation and research, improve the health of our community, and make Sacramento State an even more vital force in the region and in the state of California. The work of the Council will be, to, will be collaborative and often interdisciplinary. The Council will work very closely with the various colleges' advisory councils. And beyond growing jobs and promoting new technology, the Council will help raise funds from industry as part of our philanthropic imperative. And raise funds we must. We are hiring 69 new full-time tenure faculty this year. We have already hired close to 20 of those 69. And thanks to the commitment of the hiring committees to diversity, and thanks to the training that Dr. Robin Carter has provided, the hiring pools are much more inclusive. More importantly, we've actually seen an increase in the number of people of color who have been hired. And the number of women. But these 69 faculty will not be enough as students continue to take more units. The 374 courses that we added in the fall and the 169 courses that we are adding this spring are largely being taught by part-time lecturers. These lecturers are excellent and many of them bring with them valuable experience. But our students need faculty who are full-time, who can advise them, who can be there for the long term, who they will recognize and know. All of which brings me to my biggest worry, finances and our budget. The CSU system has asked for an increase in the total budget of $343,700,000. The governor's budget allocates $157,200,000. It's an increase over last year, but only of 2%. In the worst case scenario, and we must prepare for the worst case scenario, we project that we at Sac State will have a $7,126,200 deficit, which would require every division to cut their budgets by 4.9%. With these cuts, we will have no money for new facilities, for infrastructure repair, no money to extend the graduation initiative, and no money for enrollment growth. Hence, we have frozen our enrollment and will continue to do so. The graduation initiative is a high priority for the CSU system and for Sac State. A major reason that the CSU system is even considering a tuition increase of $77 million 
is because those funds can be used to supplement the graduation initiative by 75 million. It's too early to know whether the trustees will vote for a tuition increase, and it's too early to know whether the legislature will provide more funds than the governor's budget does. A seven million dollar cut will be very hard to observe, absorb. But I remain optimistic that the legislature will be more forthcoming with funds. And we, along with Patrick, along with CFA, along with everyone, will work hard and closely with our legislatures, encourage them to increase the budget. Everything is uncertain now from what will happen because of the election to what will happen because of the budget. I am deadly serious, however, when I say that we must make this year the year of us, the year of Sac State. We must do right by and for our students. We must help them graduate as quickly as possible with the best education that we can possibly give them. We must create an inclusive environment where everyone belongs. We must move our comprehensive campaign forward and raise funds for the science building, double the number of scholarships, and raise funds for operations. And we must work with our community to make the community strong and stay strong at the same time. As Patrick said, we cannot lose hope. We cannot lose pride in being a Hornet family. We cannot stop transforming lives. We came to Sac State because we care. And we stay here because we care. We care for our students, and we care for each other. We were founded in 1947. 2017 marks our 70th anniversary. This is our year. I said, this is our year. This is the year of us, the year of the Hornets, and the year of Sac State. So. Let's not end on a sour note. <laughs> Let's end on some humor. Let's pick fun of a president, of this president, OK? <laughs> Let's see how Herky is going to save our future and all of us. Let's laugh. Let's remember who we are. Let's dedicate ourselves to the year of us to the year of Sac State. Roll the video. Just not feeling myself, Just not feeling myself today. Something, something doesn't feel quite right. Fed the cat, closed the garage door, Comb my hair. Stingers up. Stingers up. Stingers up. Stingers up. What could it be? Something just feels a little off today. I think I might know who has the answer. Oh, hey, President Nelson. How's your day going? I'm having such a bad, horrible day. First, I had a flat tire. 
Then I lost my phone. And this shirt feels like paper. I think I might know what the problem is. <laughs> That's much better. And just one more thing. <laughs> Sac State is number one. Steve! Hello, this is President Robert Nelson. I'm busy right now. Can you please leave a message? And oh, Stingers up. No squirrels were harmed in the filming of this commercial. And the rumor that I am going around on weekends and catching squirrels as the chickens disappeared, that rumor is not true. And with that, as always, Sack Stadium is number one and Stinger's up!